You're listening to the Wedding Biz Network, the voice of the creative entrepreneur. Hey everyone, it's Andy Kushner with The Wedding Biz, brought to you today by Party Slate, the first website designed specifically for event professionals and venues. And on The Wedding Biz, I conduct in-depth and revealing interviews of icons and those who I feel are the next generation icons of the weddings and event industry, all to provide you with education and inspiration. So if you missed last week's episode, it was with Robin Selden and Jeffrey Selden of the well-known catering company, Marsha Selden Catering. Today's guest is Tom Kehoe the CEO of Kehoe Designs, a full-service event design and decor company that specializes in social and corporate events, including private parties, luxury weddings, fundraisers, experiential activations, trade shows, product launches, festivals, and retail openings. Tom is also the owner of the -the state-of-the-art events venue, The Garrity, and Black Oak Technical Productions. In addition to other recognition, Tom was awarded Top 50 Event Designers by BizBash in 2019. Enjoy this conversation with Tom Kehoe. Hey, Tom, I understand you've never done a podcast, so I am totally honored and excited that you're doing this one. Absolutely, me too. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and I want to thank, before we begin, I want to thank Julie Novak, the CEO of Party Slate, because she referred me to you, and she was in episodes 121 and 373 for those listening, so I give a shout out to Julie. Awesome. She is a great girl. Yeah, she's fantastic. Oh my gosh. So I, you know, when I started to kind of research you, Tom, I found, I I believe you started your floral career when you were just 16. Do I have that right? Yeah, that is correct. How did that come to be? How did you do that? I went in to buy my mom flowers and overheard that they needed a driver for Valentine's Day. And I said, oh, I could drive. I had just gotten my driver's license that day. Oh, my God. I hope they didn't know that. I hope you didn't tell them. (laughs) I did not. (laughs) And I delivered and it was great and had so much fun over the Valentine's Day little holiday. And then uh, they were like, great. Thanks so much. And I said, oh you know, this is so much fun. Can I stay on and do something else? And they said, if you want to work in the shop, you can. And I did and just started cleaning up, cleaning their buckets, dumping garbage, you know, doing their grunt work. And then I said, can I make something? Because I was just was watching them over a couple of weeks. And they said, sure, take anything you want out of the garbage and make something. <laughs> and so I did. And then they were like, oh, well, try it again. And I did. And then they were like, oh, all right, now go into the cooler. And and then I just started and it just came to me. That's really interesting. Did you have an interest in flowers or a passion for flowers before this, before you ever met them? Not really flowers, but I did for landscape. Huh. And, you know, I started cutting grass and doing, you know, landscaping. I used to cut, you know, neighbor's grass for, you know, for money. You know, I was like, I think, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something. Yep, me too. Right there with you. Yeah. yeah. And then I just started like, you know, moving some bushes around and planting annuals and stuff. And then I would say, Hey dad, can we do this? And, and, you know, what, what if we add this to the, the front yard and this to the backyard? And he'd say, sure. Why don't you go to the store, you know, put your plan together, go to the store, figure out how much it's going to cost and then come back and we'll talk through your plan. And, and that's, so I loved doing that. And then, so it was just when I walked into a flower shop, it really was like the first time being in a flower shop. And then I was like, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> but but here's the thing. I understand, though, that you then a couple of years later, you went to Florida International University and you got a double major in business and hospitality management. What were you thinking during that time? I mean, did you know exactly where you wanted to go after college or or were you still just checking it out? I was I really wanted to go into hotels. And thought, I, I love the hospitality industry and wanted to own and operate a hotel. And thought I would always go back to a flower shop and own one later in life. Hmm. And so it just was, you know, it just happened that right after school, the owners that I used to work for, it was a husband and wife, the husband passed away unexpectedly. And so I went back to help the wife. And... Then, of course, being right out of school, I was, you know, very 
energized and confident and said, oh, you need a marketing plan and a business plan. And, you know, <laughs> right. and, she, and she was like, calm down, Sparky. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, why don't you let me um, kind of work my way in as a partner? And she said, how about you buy me out? Whoa. Wait a minute. And you're only like 21, 22 at this time? Yeah, I was 22. Huh. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I went home and had the conversation said, to, you know, my mom and dad said, hey, listen to the conversation I just had today. And they said, let's do it. Let's, let's figure this out. And so they went and got a home equity loan and loaned me the money to buy wow. the flower shop. What an incredible thing that you had such an, such wonderful support from your parents, you know? I mean, so many people can't say that. Yeah, honestly, it was amazing. And, you know, they had to go get a home equity. We didn't, we're not a family of high funds. And they took a chance and, you know, they, I think, saw the passion. I was a little workaholic as a kid. <laughs> and, you know, my parents used to say to me, like, you know, like, stop working so much, like go have some fun, you know? And so I think they knew I had good at work ethic and they trusted me. So I was in the right spot at the right time and had the right support. Wow. And so that really is the start of it. I mean, you built, that's, that's the shop that you then turned into this empire <laughs> that you have now. I mean, it started then. Yeah, exactly. So then how did you start to expand? I mean, Tom, I mean, we're going to get into it, you know, through this interview, but it's just, it, blows me away when I go through your website and I see all that your company um, can do and, and how you have so much in-house and, 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 and all of that. So did you bring on any partners or did you, like, like how did you get this to, to take that leap to go from just you owning this shop at the age of 22? No, I, I've been fortunate enough to never have any partners. Um, I've done it by myself. And I just really have surrounded myself with a great team and have taken care of my team and grew the business based on skill set, things that they have brought to the table and things that I learned and developed and really wanted to offer, you know, the capabilities that I was capable of because I was so afraid of selling something to someone that I couldn't make. Oh, interesting. So if I, you know, had a artist, I had to be able to know how they were going to make something so that in case they weren't there, that I could make it, you know, it was one of those, I was also, I just was a very hands-on. I always have been, still am. I love working with my hands. And so it was just one of those things where, you know, from fabric and art and, you know, the basics of lighting, like I was, I, I did it myself. Yeah. And then found, okay, great. You know what? This is something I want to do and, and offer. Let's, you know, find some people that can join us that can do it. And that's how I did it little by little, every department. Yeah. So you, you know, it's interesting you're saying that because I know in certain, you know, certain industries, like they talk, especially about the uh, recording industry with records. I mean, I, I have another podcast called the music makers and I just interviewed this major label executive. And I, at the end of the interview, I said, is there one, I mean, you know, all that we've talked about, is there one particular thing that you would say is a piece of advice you give to someone who wants to get to where you're at? And he talked about the team like you, I mean, saying yeah. that, that you got to build that team. And, and also like, like you're talking about really understand each part of the business yourself in order to be the most effective managing other people. hundred percent. Yeah. That's so important. I want to talk for a little while about weddings, and then I want to talk about other events with you too. But when it comes to weddings, can you take me through your general process, you know, how it goes from when you first meet with a wedding client and through the event, how is it that you, you know, kind of come up with the design ideas, the vision that you have from talking to clients, you know, if you're able to put that in words? Sure. We always start off with an initial brainstorm. And it's really a get to know each other. And so it's just very conversational. I want to get to know, you know, the bride and groom, especially, and the family, you know, whoever's hosting, I want it to be their personality so that when their guests arrive or when they walk out of that party, they say, oh my gosh, this was so Jack and Jill. Like it was such their personality. So I do a whole get to know each other. And I, and also as a comfort level, so that we all feel really comfortable working with each other. 
because, you know, we all come across some people that we don't jive with. Do you turn those people away? Absolutely. And so one, I'll say, you know what? I think you might be a better fit for, you know, someone else on my team, you know, because of your energy or your attention to detail or something of whatever it is that makes me concerned. Something positive. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, but usually we can connect and we can brainstorm and get started. And then once we do, and we feel like there's a connection, and there's good and comfort, you know, that because I, I want freedom, I want to feel confident and trusted and encouraged by the clients and and I want to be able to like to be able to reach out or send a text and be like, hey, I just saw this and what do you think of this? Or here's an off the wall idea. Is this too crazy or is this okay? You know, so I like I like to do kind of some barometer checks just when we're starting to get to know each other. And that helps me formulate my initial direction. Does it ever come up that you do show them an idea that they just don't relate with resonate with? Sure. And and you just have to let it go, even if you love it. Hundred percent. It's not my wedding, right? You know, I want this to be their personality, and I feel like that's one of the main things of why we're successful is because you know we don't all of our weddings don't look alike. It's got that personality. It's got some whimsy or humor or whatever the the couple has about them. I want it to be seen in the in the design that we create for their wedding. So, Tom, do you tend to get visions for what this will be while you're talking to them and share it? Or do you first have this kind of get to know them conversation and then uh, come back later and present something to them? A little bit of both. Initially, some things just happen where it's like, bam, 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 click, you know, like it's, it's, you're able to feed right off of them and be like, oh, this would be great. Oh, this would be great. Oh, what about this? And, and then Typically, they'll get excited or, you know, they'll have a response and good or bad. And so I'd love to be able to throw ideas out right away or sketch something out and say, you know, this is what I see for a stage or a canopy or a backdrop or, you know, whatever it may be. And when that happens, I love it because I just get excited and I get carried away. And then they usually kind of fold right into it. And then we feed off of each other's excitement and interest. And then that's when we get off to the best start. I typically then take it to the next, you know, where I say, all right, I'm going to ask for a couple of weeks. I'm going to meet with my team and brainstorm some more and then come back to them. And so then I do that. I then pull together anywhere from two to four people from my team that will we'll get together and brainstorm. We have a, a, a couple of people that are part of our creative service uh, team. and. They literally are just that. They, you go to them and I say, okay, here's the, here's the wedding. And this is the scenario of the bride and groom and, you know, the venue and, you know, our goals and the experience that we're trying to achieve and all the different elements that the bride and groom really like. Let's brainstorm and develop this and see what we can come up with and how can we take this further. And we all put together ideas and we do it right then and there. And then we also then take a week to two weeks on our own, create some storyboards, and then we meet again and we all lay everything out on the table. And then we all just like, oh, that's awesome. Oh, let's, and we literally pick and choose and create one consolidated board and that we all agree and that we all like and feel that this is the direction that we think the bride and groom are going to love. And then I present that to the bride and groom. Geez, what a wonderful fun process, you know? It sounds like like a blast. Yeah, it really is. And that's key. It has to be fun for the bride and groom, but it also has to be fun for me. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, cuz that will keep me inspired and and motivated and and help them create the best design and it keeps our team excited and we all really like it's a high energy, high fun environment here. Can you give me maybe a story of, of a, you know, maybe a, a favorite wedding event? Again, if you could put in words, you know, what it is you discovered about them and then how you manifested it with, a, with design. So I had this bride and groom where the bride was willing to take more chances and have more style and edgy. The groom was conservative and quiet. And, and so the bride was like, you know, I want to have fun and, and be whimsical about it but I want to 
be respectful of, you know, my groom and his family and not go too crazy or, you know. So we did a beautiful sit down dinner, classic. We filled the host ceiling with solid greenery and fresh flowers and then perforated it with 54 crystal chandeliers. And we did this gorgeous, you know, collection of tables from linen tables, mirrored tables, wood tables, things that we're all seeing today. This this happened a couple of years ago. And beautiful, elegant dinner. And then we did a transfer over to the dancing and created this amazing tunnel walkway, taking us from the dinner room into the dance room. And in the dance room, we just, we brought in a little bit more fun and personality. And I had picked a Poochie print scarf that I had seen in a Poochie book. And we made that as our circular dance floor. We did an amazing lounge groupings. We hung awesome orbs done in the metallics with fresh flowers. And then we did a really cool horse table. We got this horse from the Field Museum. And literally, it's a fiberglass horse that was part of an exhibit. And we cut it in half, took off the top half, the head and top of the back, and had the legs and belly of this horse. And we did put a tabletop on it. And it was it's the most beautiful table, these great horse legs and the stance. And we made that the cake table. Oh, you know, so we just did really fun, unexpected pieces that the bride went nuts over. And the groom was like, this is perfect because she's so excited. <laughs> that, yeah, right, that, right. You know, he loved, and, but yet his family and he was so happy with a gorgeous, elegant dinner, but they got their personality, you know, and, and that was a really fun experience. Wow. You know, I also read, um, I mean, and obviously this was not a wedding, but that you designed an event for something like 3,000 guests where you made it appear that Lake Michigan changed its color. Do I have that right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. That was amazing. It was right, you know, at a club right on the edge of the water. And we did this amazing lighting projection onto the water of Lake Michigan. And it truly was breathtaking. It really was. The colors, you just, you know, we went from the traditional aquatic colors of the blues and greens into, you know, reds and oranges and fire colors. And it was beautiful. And as the night went on, you know, we added more color into it and, you know, just went back to the purples and it, and the water, it was one of those surreal things. It, you know, you knew where the water was, but because it was illuminated, it looked like it was so much closer. Like you're like, Oh my gosh, is it right there? Like it was, God, that's yeah, so interesting. It was so cool. It was, a, that was a great event. If you are an event planner, venue, caterer, photographer, or any other industry professional, you really should be aware of and using the party slate marketing platform. And I want to say, I only work with sponsors, whose product or service I'm either fully aware of or even use myself. So you can create a free profile that can act as a photo-rich portfolio or Party Slate has additional membership options available. And if you're planning or involved with an event, from weddings to fundraisers to baby showers and, and really everything in between, you, you should use Party Slate to get inspired. You know, save your favorite ideas and contact top professionals to help create your dream event. New photos from real events are uploaded to Party Slate daily, and their editorial team publishes articles that highlight the latest trends and planning tips. It is a really great site. You've got to visit PartySlate.com to get started. And again, that's PartySlate.com. I also read that you and your team designed a, a gala experience for RJO during the Chicago Children's Choir's 60th anniversary season, and it resulted in, uh, I mean, they broke records, like raised $1.25 million, uh, raised for CCC, which was a record for them. How does your approach to galas differ or not from the way you work on weddings? It's not much different from the weddings. It's in the sense of we try and we say, what experience do you want the guests to experience? What goal are you trying to do? Because sometimes 
fundraising isn't their only goal. Sometimes it's just, you know, awareness or a message or, you know, it could be multiple things, but this one, it was, you know, their message and fundraising. So, you know, we approach it in, in getting to know the client and the goal. What do we want to achieve? And then we tackle it and we say, okay, great. How can we, you know, create that experience? How can we get the messaging through? How can we touch the hearts of, you know, the patrons? Cause that's what it is. It's when we all, you know, you get that soft moment <laughs> and then also that panel goes up and you've committed to $25,000. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and exactly. You're like, and we actually just had them in here a week ago for their 65th anniversary. And it was amazing. And, and they even hit 1.75 oh this my million this year. Wow. Yeah. Phenomenal. And every year we do it completely different. Anything from, you know, the 60th when you were talking about it, we did the images of the kids. And then this year we did a clean slate, all silver, all um, in one big open room, no dividers for cocktails or after party because of COVID. And everyone commented that they felt so in fresh air, you know, and big and open. And it's the goal of how, you know, how do we create that experience? The one key thing that we did this year is we put the stage in the center and did a center stage, a 30 foot diameter center stage for a hundred performers. That was a feat because the sound and the lighting off of a center stage was really challenging to have. Yo, that's really hard. Yeah. yeah. And it was fantastic. And the event planner said, you know, this was amazing. I don't know how we're ever going to top this. And I said, well, I think we just came up with our new floor plan for the next year because having that circular stage and the whole room being open was such an incredible feeling. You really could see everyone and feel everyone and seeing everyone across each other versus sitting back behind the stage and, you know, kind of downstage, if you will, it was so much more powerful. So then during the auction, they were able to see more people of who was bidding on what. So they did their silent auction and they had more challenges this year in the sense of higher tickets, which was the best thing that they could have ever had. And, you know, so they had, you know, these private dinners going for 50 and $60,000 Never have they had that before. And they all said it, they felt like it was because the bidders could see each other. So that was great. Well, do you do you ever feel any, I mean, talk, I, I mean, I'm just imagining the pressure has got to be tremendous. Do, do you ever feel anxiety or fear when you're do, dealing with all this? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I do. Um, you know, it's A, the fear of, did I forget anything? <laughs> you know, like, you yeah. know, did I remember it all? Um, anxiety of, you know, am I going to make them happy? Is this what they're thinking is, you know, because a lot of times I ask for that freedom, I ask for the space. And, and so then I'm, I want to surprise the guests and, you know, the clients. So I'm not a minute detail person, I don't tell them like, oh, you know, I'm going to give you, you know, everything, I don't share every detail of what I'm going to give them. I give them the overall feel and view. But I, yeah. I, I, I leave a lot so they're surprised. Yeah, they're surprised. And it leaves freedom for me because I work my best right. under pressure and I do a lot of things with a lot of change and things, you know, one thing morphs into another. And so I like that freedom. And so then all of a sudden little anxiety hits you because then you're like, holy cow, is this really what the client wants? Or, you know, and, and then I have to kind of give myself a hit check. Okay. Is yes, this is what I, this is what the client wants. This is, you know, and and it's fun, but it gives you anxiety. It's like, because I want to please everyone. I want them to have the happiness and experience that, you know, that they go to weddings for and that they, you know, love. People love going to weddings, you know, it's, and, and I want to, you know, keep that experience on a high. Well, what about when, when you do face like an unforeseen challenge? I mean, can you give an example of just a major challenge that scared the hell out of you and then how you overcame it? I imagine there's, we all have tons of them, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I had a, you know, a minor one this weekend, this past okay. weekend, where yeah. literally we're turning the room over. We're going, we had a large wedding and very elaborate. And we had a one day setup. So we got access to the room at 4 a.m. 
And literally, as we arrived at 4 a.m. to start setting up, the event from the night before was still pulling out, you know? Oh, my God. And so we did it. And we set it in the hunting yards. And we did ceremony. And it was very elaborate. And then we are turning the room over. And right at the beginning of the turnover, we're starting to place, you know, the tables and everything. And I literally look awesome. I was like, oh, my God, where are the bride and groom chairs? Because we had made these throne style chairs for the bride and groom. And I looked at my guys and I was like, where's the bride and groom chairs? <laughs> they're all like, what bride and groom chairs? You know, oh, my like, God. oh you know, so it was like, oh, my God, that's a big one. Yeah. It was. And it was like, hey, we're not going to have them a time. And, you know, so trying to talk to the, you know, so, oh, you know, we're all talking among us ourselves. And I'm like, OK, so then I'm, we're trying to figure out, you know, plan B in the honey yards. And I go to the planner. And anyway, I you just I was like, you know what? What's our true, true, true time for opening the doors? We went back, got the chairs from the warehouse. It was literally that we left them. It was, you know, 40 minutes away. And they said, we'll go right onto the dance floor, not let anyone sit down. And we made it. We got the chairs, got them back. By the time they were, you know, before they were even off the dance floor, yeah. we, the chairs were in place and they were ready to go. And, <laughs> and it was, it was a minor one, but you know, it was a setback. There was one of those like, oh my God, you know. Right. And of course they have no idea. None. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, but, but yeah, we've had some other, some things fall. You're setting a room and all of a sudden a, a, hu a huge centerpiece, you know, flips over. And, uh -huh. you know, I had that a couple of weeks ago and it was like, oh, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> okay, this is not going to work, you know, all right, we got a modifier. How are we going to do this? What are you going to change, you know? And you just, you know, the biggest thing is you got to stay calm, no screaming, you know, that old saying, don't let them see you sweat, calm as a duck and their, their feet are paddling so fast under the water. Yeah, right. You know, you yeah. just, you got to stay that way. That's the key. Yeah. I, you know, I have a band business and I, I remember, God, for years I would, people knew, I knew, like my band knew when I was stressed and I, and I thought to myself, okay, I need to figure out how to look calm on the outside and just keep all this in the inside. I mean, it took a while to be able to develop that skill. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I also want to ask you, I know that you've got a, a you have a workforce of what, like hundreds of people. Yeah. <laughs> including artisans, craftsmen, designers. How do you look at the juxtaposition of the business with the creative. I mean, it's because, because I mean, you've got clearly time, you've got a super successful company. It's really large um, over all these years. It's it's gotten bigger and bigger. How do you do that? I, I mean, it certainly wasn't just from your college degree. You know? <laughs> no, I, I wish it was. It is. It's a challenge. It's a constant challenge because I often get wrapped up in the creativity and it's easy then to go out of budget. But I, you know, we keep track very closely of every expenditure for every job. You know, we track everything from hours per event. So, you know, we will do multiple events per day, per week, and we track everyone's hours, just like an attorney or any other professional, you know, like, all right, today I work, you know, I worked three hours on this event and I worked two hours on this event and I did a half hour on this event. We track those hours so that we are aware of, you know, where the dollars are being spent. And we do that with everything from the creative, right? When we're planning something, you know, designing it from the beginning, this is our goal. We will set a goal budget and it can fluctuate, but we give a, a, a target to begin with so that we're not all just, out in dreamland, you know, so that we can have our reality as we work. And then we say, okay, you know what, this is reality, but we want to go a little bit more. And then we, you know, look at it and say, how can we do it? What's the best way to do it? How can we value engineer it? And then once we've exhausted all of that, sometimes we'll go back to a client and say, hey, here's where we're at. You know, we can do what we want, but we would love a little bit extra to do a little bit extra. And, you know, oftentimes they say, go for it. And sometimes they say no, but most of the time they, they feel the excitement and, and they respect that we respect their budget. And, you know, and that's another key thing. I really respect the client's budget. I ask them up front. I say, give me a target. 
give me a range, give me something. Don't just play. I don't know. I don't have a budget. I can't, you know, it doesn't work for me. And so I ask for something. And then if they say, really, they don't know, then I say, great, I'll create what I think is a budget you should work with. And then it helps with this, you know, starting point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting when earlier you said, I mean, that you track the time that, that goes with every, you know, task. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that most of us don't do that. And it would probably be really eye-opening to do something like that and look at a report. Yeah, it really is because you don't realize how much time is spent, and especially from some of your coworkers. And and then it helps, you know, then our seasoned managers can say, hey, you've got, you know, a half hour to get this test done, or you've got, you know, two hours to do, you know, X, Y, Z. And then the staff can say, great, I can do it or I can't do it or, you know, and then we know how to how to work it. And there's times that, you know, there's a lot of things that we do for the first time. And those custom builds is what they're called. That's our money loser. You know, those those first time and it's often, but we have to offset it sometimes with our bread and butter, (laughs) you know, the items that you'd make your money on. You say, okay, you know what? Because our custom build is what is going to give us the special niche on this wedding or event that everyone's going to talk about. We're going to take a loss on it a little bit because we know we also have our bread and butter that we're going to use this table or, you know, this candlestick or something that's going to help us recoup and offset that money. So we, we watch our money. We watch it, you know, as closely as we possibly can. And with balancing the creativity and the financial. Yeah, that's well, that, that, that answers that. So critical, you know, also um, before we go, the rate of change has been so intense uh, and I'm not just talking about COVID and what we went through and what that might be, you know, leading us to, but staying relevant and keeping up on this rate of change and staying relevant, obviously so critical. And you started your company uh, a, a while, I mean, decades ago. How do you view that? You know, keeping, like I say, just simply keeping relevant. It's really a natural for me in the sense that I have a really short attention span <laughs> and I love constant change and I sometimes I drive my team nuts because I'm always like I I, if I'm idle for too long something's wrong you know and I get that you know paranoia like oh my gosh like what am I doing something's wrong I'm missing something you know so I'm always looking for something to do and the next thing to do like okay great we've mastered you know the skills that we have what else can we learn what else can we offer what can we do that we're not doing what can we you know, recreate. We just started, you know, we did our, um, a restaurant design over the years. I've done a couple restaurant designs and, but coming into, this was a really, um, in Chicago, it's, there's a group called Boca and it, they're a phenomenal restaurant group, very large. And they came to us and said, we have this great restaurant that we want to renovate. Would you want to put your hat in the ring for, you know, designing and recreating this restaurant? And we did it. And it was amazing. And we now have three other restaurants that we're working on. And our team is so invigorated, especially my, myself, because it's something new and it's right up our alley, but it's a new challenge. And I need that constant drive and stimulation and excitement. It forces you to look for new materials, look for new innovation, look for new craftsmen that can do a different twist to the old existing tried and true. And so our team really loves it. We all feed off of it. And that's our, that's a, our environment. You know, we all, we all enjoy it. So we, you know, really inspire each other. I love it. The team comes to me and says, Hey, look at this great idea. I'll be like, Holy cow. That's, you know, so cool. This, you know, f- some pergola that they made out in Dubai or something. And it's like, how can we do that? Let's, you know, and sometimes we'll just look at a photo and we, and we literally do a whole diagram and create an architectural plan of how we could build something. And, and then we'll try it, you know, and then we'll say, great, let's find the right client for this. And I want to keep my team stimulated and interested so that they're fed and excited and ready to go for when our clients walk in, we feel and sound energized and like we're the right place to, for them to come for something new and refreshing. Yeah. Well, gosh, Tom, this has been, 
This has really been fantastic getting to know you like this and, and hearing more about how you run your company. And I just can't thank you enough for taking the time, you know, so, so thanks for doing this. Oh, gosh, my pleasure. This has been fun. I love talking about it. So thank you so much. I'd love to do it anytime. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you for listening to my conversation with Tom Kehoe. And be sure to check out his website, which is kehoedesigns.com. And that's spelled K-E-H-O-E designs.com. The social media handles on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and YouTube is Kehoe Designs. His other websites can be found in the show notes at our website, ofthewedingbiz.com. And if you can think of three good friends who you think would benefit from this interview, please forward it to them. And also give a top review to wherever you get your podcast from because it will help people find The Wedding Biz. And next week's guest is going to be Annie Lee, Principal Planner of Daughter of Design. And once again, I want to thank today's sponsor, Party Slate, who you can find at PartySlate.com. And we'll catch you next week on The Wedding Biz. Wedding Biz.